We were set free from our parking lot captivity and pushed north from Missouri to Iowa and then to Michigan after a single night in Indiana. That's a lot of travel. Along our way, we found a street shaped like a serpent, a former farm family that is now building bespoke furniture and other artisan goods. There was a haunted vineyard, and we reconnected with friends and family. We also saw a crafty town in the middle of America, and well, you'll just have to hang in there, and we'll unload factoids aplenty in this episode of Leon's Great Escape. There is a fog. It's more of a metaphor than atmospheric, which has bogged itself most lethargically in my frontal lobes. This weighted spirit plagues you with uncertainty, stagnation, and a piss and vinegar attitude. I have named this fog. Are you curious about its name? Well, I'll tell you anyway. I've named it Cantankerous the Vile. He only possesses those which are unsure on where to reside. Our great escape was set about to explore and identify a new home. We're now 6,000 miles, 13 states, and 50 gallons of iced coffee in, and we haven't found it yet. I can tell that you're not the slightest bit concerned, and that's splendid. Same here. No, but seriously, we appreciate your vote of confidence. We are inquired regularly if we're honing in on one place over another. In a word, no. Though we aren't set on anything that we've visited quite yet, we have compiled a list of attributes that we'd prefer to see in our new hometown. They are as follows. A population between 500,000 and 2 million, an educated and driven populace, better than average schools, we have pepper to consider here, job opportunities, we'd like it to be affordable, we're not into crime, it'd be cool if they were environmentally conscious, suitable public transportation would be nice, walkable, bikeable, Maybe some breathing room amongst neighbors, green space, moderate winter, and a reduced risk of natural disasters. This is a working list, and subject to change. Cantankerous? That curmudgeon. He was so upset when we put pen to paper, because he knew that we were just a turn or two away from a breakthrough which would expel him permanently. We lived in the Cummins Sale and Service parking lot in Missouri for about a week, while they figured out what was wrong with our generator. Turned out to be a busted governor arm, or something like that, which is deep in the internals of the thing. Most of our escapades while touring Missouri can be seen in another video. But there were some things that didn't make it in time that I'd like to tell you about. Now, first, are you ready to be scared to your bones while you sip on Vintner's Delight? The wine at the Belvoir Winery is to die for. And plenty of people have actually died there. It's a popular destination for the ghost hunting community as it's active in paranormal activity. Our barkeep nonchalantly told us about her personal experiences with pianos, playing themselves, and apparitions walking the halls. The property once housed an orphanage, as well as a fraternal order called the Independent Order of the Odd Fellows. Belvoir, in addition to wine, has an inn, too, if you dare to join the fun. We were just there for the booze and some potential booze as we walked among the remains of what was an old infirmary. It's still rotting away on site. On the way out of Missouri, we stayed the night in a town called Bethany. Our hosts there were part of the Harvest Host program that we've mentioned in previous episodes. This was a treat. The land is owned by the Witt family, and they run a company called The Bent Tree. John and Marcia make bespoke works out of wood and fiber, and their daughter Stacy is gifted in leather. This is a talented tribe. Candace purchased this gorgeous bracelet while we were there, and we both swore that we'd come back and take their learn to build your own chair classes. Once we figured out where we'd settle down. We, we need a place to put that chair. The grounds are aching for landscape photographers to get off their keisters and take some snapshots. There's a path to hike and great conversations to be had. While there, you could always increase your waistline at the local restaurant called Toot Toot. They've got a renowned buffet and some buttery biscuits and pork gravy that I'm still trying to walk off. Give me time and I will see my feet again. 
Have you been to Iowa? We have. Over three million people live in the state of Iowa, with cities like Des Moines, Cedar Rapids, and Davenport being amongst the most densely populated. Did you know that Iowa was the 29th state added to the Union back in 1846? Let me tell you why you care. John Wayne was born here. Is that not doing it for you? I got more. There's a lot. And I mean a lot of food being grown in Iowa. Iowa produces 1 11th of the nation's food supply. And it's the largest producer of corn, pork, and eggs. And the second in soybeans. Call it big ag, big agriculture, or industrialized growing. Call it what you will. But it's impressive. Uniform crops as far as the eye can see. But the number one export of Iowa is its electoral influence. Unlike primary elections in most other U.S. states where registered voters go to the polling place and cast a ballot, Iowans instead gather at local caucuses to discuss and vote on the candidate. It's like interactive and stuff, man. States that use the caucus system are Alaska, Colorado, Hawaii, Kansas, Maine, Minnesota, Nevada, North Dakota, Wyoming, and Iowa. And the Iowa caucus is held first. It's used by candidates as a proving ground for their messages and platform. It's said that if you can't win in Iowa, you should reconsider your overall appeal, chances of success, and former life decisions. There are some interesting places to visit while you're here. I'll start with Benton's Port, which hasn't changed a bit since it was a thriving steamboat port back in the mid-1800s. Walk back in time and enjoy a bed and breakfast here, or buy some handcrafted goods. A short drive from Benton's Port will land you in Burlington, and it's also a port town that's on the Mississippi River. This is where we were joined up with our friend Tony. This is also where I experienced my first tenderloin sandwich at the Buffalo. And I swear to you, here and now, it will not be my last. This is terrible for you, and it's delicious at the same time. I also found this shirt prominently displayed. Taco fans everywhere rejoice. After you've eaten, you may want to stroll down Snake Alley, a sinuous street in Burlington. In my opinion, there were no snakes there. It's still a marvel even if it's just sinuous. Constructed in 1894, it was intended to help connect the residential district at the top of the bluff with the commercial district down below. Now it's really just for show. Can I be honest with you? I had to look up the word sinuous, which means to have many curves or turns. Moving on, who doesn't love a good mosquito bite? The folks of Burlington are so fond of them that they named a park after the little buggers. For a fabulous view of the Mississippi River, stop here. This is a small park on a bluff in a neighborhood of beautiful homes, says Gluten-Free Celia Cat on TripAdvisor. I agree with you, Gluten-Free Celia Cat, and I couldn't have put it better myself. Hey, Celia Cat, did you know that Big Grove Brewery and Tap Room in Iowa City provides gluten-free menu options? They also provide a playground that Pepper explored while Candace and I sampled their ales. Iowa City has a population of 75,000. Seems like a nice city in general, but we didn't have much time there, so I, I really can't say one thing or another about it. You should go there. You should tell me whether it's your cup of tea or beer. I will vouch for Big Grove. We also had a pint with our friend Nick there, and then we washed it down afterwards at a pizza place that was one of his favorites. How was your chakra? There are some spiritual folks in Fairfield, Iowa, that I'm sure could inform you if you're not illuminated. I didn't have my chakra inspected, but I did enjoy walking the streets and taking in the brick buildings. A ways down the road, you'll find the Maharaja University, where you can meditate on world peace and stuff. This is all in the middle of farm country, Iowa. I was confused and delighted all at the same time. Candace might like to live here but there are no jobs. So I'm sorry, but your princess is in another castle. Iowa offers plenty of forestry too. Check out this slick hiking scene. tell you about Mount Pleasant, Iowa, which is where we parked our motorhome. It isn't that pleasant, that's all I'll say. Michigan is another gem for the outdoor types among us. Charlevoix, Michigan is a fun lakeside town that is brimming with restaurants and such. Our time here was spent with friends and family, so we didn't capture much of it, and that was absolutely fine. If you can deal with five months of winter, 
then you can take advantage of their trails, ATVs, hunting, lakes, and general beauty. We're now focused on researching and crunching the numbers on where to visit next as our potential home. Cantankerous the Vile will be vanquished, and our sinuous tail will wind on. We'll head east and eventually run into an ocean. I hope you'll join us when we recap what happens along the way. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with anyone that you think would appreciate it. Until next time, ta-ta!